So what is the secret behind the ghost cities of China? What you see here is myself and Lao 86 standing in a ghost city in Liaoning province. This isn't the only ghost city we visited, however. Here in Hunan, you can drive for hundreds of miles and on each side of the road you will see multiple little ghost cities and ghost villages dotting the landscape. Let's head on to Shandong province next, and as you can see, right near the big city of Qingdao, as we rode our motorcycles through completely empty husks of buildings in another ghost city. These things dot the landscape all over China. How about Guangdong province, where both myself and Matthew lived for the majority of our time in China? Here, in Huizhou, you can once again see more ghost cities that we used to visit from time to time. And of course, probably the most famous ghost city in China, Urdos, up in Inner Mongolia, well, here you can see some of the photos I snapped as I went around the town, seeing all the Mongolian motifs and beautiful but empty, eerie and soulless buildings, complexes, shopping malls and housing estates. If you take a step back and actually look at the map, these are just the ghost cities that we have personally visited. We have seen more during our travels, but didn't have time to film or were passing by or whatever the case may be. The thing is, I think you get the picture. These ghost cities are all over China and I'm going to tell you why they're so important and why the Chinese government has to lie to you and its own citizens in order to prevent the massive economic collapse that so many economists have wrongly predicted up until this point. It always baffled me how ridiculously over the top the cost of apartments in China were. I lived in quite a few different apartments and although the rent was reasonable and actually very cheap by international standards, the amount that these apartments were worth was just ridiculous, sometimes millions of US dollars. Well, it turns out that about 70% of China's wealth is stashed away in real estate. And well, it's pretty easy to understand why. As an ordinary Chinese person, your investment opportunities are very, very limited and also extremely risky. The stock market has crashed several times and the Chinese government randomly steps in and freezes, delists, meddles and does whatever it wants in the stock market whenever it sees fit. I mean, we saw this with the whole DD debacle and the Alibaba nonsense with Jack Ma disappearing, just to mention a few of the things they've done. Bitcoin is illegal and all other means of investment are either not available to your average Chinese citizen or completely unappealing to your average person on the street. There is, however, one asset class that has never, ever faltered and has never, ever been unreliable, and that is Chinese real estate. You are and have been guaranteed for decades in China that if you buy an apartment, no matter how shoddily constructed, some fool is going to come along and buy it from you at a large profit. You can't go wrong. Buy an apartment, sit on it for a few years, sell it, make loads of cash, buy more apartments, sit on them, sell them for loads of profit, rinse and repeat. It's a foolproof investment and a great retirement fund in a country that lacks even the most basic social programs. Of course, there's traditional significance to owning a house too, like the fact that if you want to get married, you have to show that you're a stable man and you have to have a house, at the very least, before you propose. 
The thing is, people are sinking their savings into real estate, and it's not the house they live in. Of course, if you can afford a house and you buy the house, well, when I say house, I'm talking about an apartment. You don't own the land, and it's actually only a 70-year lease. It's kind of a ridiculous situation. But anyway, you own that. But if you want to really make an investment, you need to invest in further property. So in other words, you have to buy another apartment. And usually, this is where the ghost cities come in. You see, owning a property in the cities is incredibly expensive. And for your average person, they just have to scrape by just to pay their rent or to pay for the apartment that they live in. Now, for your investment property or investment apartment, you need a cheaper option. So that's why they build these ghost cities out in the middle of nowhere. Nobody wants to go live there. It's far flung. It's like an hour or two's drive out of the city to get there at the very least. But that's why the apartments are affordable, and that's why people invest in them, because they're affordable. Because, you know, don't forget, in China, you buy an apartment, it doesn't matter where it is, the price is only going to go up, right? And that's why they create these ghost cities. And nobody goes and lives in them, they just buy and invest in them. And the thing is, once you've bought your investment property, and you're not going to live in it, well, there's no point in doing anything to it. There's no point in installing plumbing or electricity, flooring, walls, windows, anything like that. In fact, investment properties around China in general are just complete husks that look like they're under construction still or part of a construction site. And there's a very good reason for this. And the reason is that if you were to spend the money to do all the decoration, to put in the plumbing, to put in the flooring, to put in the walls and everything else that goes along with it, the value of the apartment would actually go down. And this has got to do with Chinese traditional beliefs that if you buy an apartment that's already fully furnished and all set up, you will then be taking on the previous person's bad karma or bad juju or bad feng shui. So the whole thing is, if you buy an apartment and it is already decked out with decoration, you're going to knock that stuff out anyway and start fresh. So it's going to cost you money to basically destroy what's there and start from the beginning. So if you start with an empty shell, it's worth more to you. So why bother putting in all this stuff if it's going to make your apartment worth less? And also why bother renting it? Because the rent that you will get is only a fraction of what you're paying for your mortgage anyway. I'll just give you a brief example. A friend of mine bought an apartment in Shenzhen, which of course is one of the most expensive real estate markets in the entire world. They were paying around 30,000 RMB a month for their mortgage, and they could only rent it out for a measly 4,800 RMB. So what's the point? There's really no point. You're getting a fraction of the cost back. Now you've got the hassle of a tenant. Now you have to go and make sure they're happy deal with all their complaints. On top of that, you've devalued your apartment by actually making it livable. All of this aside though, you stand to make a lot of money. Doesn't matter, like I said, doesn't matter what you buy or where you buy, as long as you're buying an apartment, at the end of the day, you will be able to sell it for more and you will be able to turn a big profit. And now you can probably see why Chinese real estate is in fact, as we stand today, the most valuable asset class in the entire world. No joke, I mean, it's valued at something like $60 trillion. And without getting too financial on you here, because I'm not a finance guy, I can tell you that it takes up about 30% of China's GDP, or something stupid like that. We're talking massive numbers. This is such a huge part of China's economy, and this is also why the Chinese government cannot allow it to fail. The thing is though, behind closed doors, it has, for the first time in history, actually started to fail. At the end of the day, it's the Chinese government who gets to say if the real estate market is going to be valuable or not. You see, they have all sorts of tricks up their sleeve. When the market starts to cool off a little too much, in other words, they see a downturn and it starts to slow, they simply take away interest rates. Oh, now you can buy a property and you pay 0% interest rates. In fact, you've seen all sorts of programs where they even say that they'll pay your first year's worth of mortgage for you. All sorts of weird and wonderful little ways to get people interested in buying property when the market cools down. The thing is, 
When it starts to overheat, they simply put a bunch of restrictions in place, like, oh, couples are only allowed to buy a certain amount of apartments. This has led to all sorts of nonsense, like people getting divorced on paper just so they can buy more property. The difference is now is it's not about the consumer anymore. That's not what the issue is right now. It's about the construction companies themselves. I'm pretty sure we've all heard about Evergrande, this massive big property developer in China, and how it's been, well, running into troubles recently. Well, what if I told you that every single real estate company in China is currently in deep, deep trouble? This entire industry is built on debt. The real estate companies take out huge amounts of debt to start their projects. They get huge amounts of investment from potential buyers, and then using that investment as capital, get even more debt. So they use debt to pay off their construction workers, to pay off their material suppliers. They use debt to pay off the interest on the debt that they've taken. But now, in fact, over a year ago, the Chinese government decided that they're going to try and put a stop to this and try and cool it down a bit. And they came up with their three red lines policy, which, simply put, prevents these real estate companies from just taking out any debt whenever they want to. They have to meet certain criteria before they can then take out more debt. And it probably won't surprise you to find out that not a single real estate company in China met the criteria of these three red lines. In other words, now you've got all of the real estate companies in China not able to take out debts. Not just Evergrande, not just the big ones, but none of them can take out any further loans to pay off their debts. So this is a huge, huge issue. And we're going to see some big changes in the whole Chinese economy soon. Let's keep an eye out, because the Chinese government will fight tooth and nail to keep the bad news out of the press, to stop people from realizing that it's a bad idea to invest in property. So in short, these ghost cities are in fact a huge part of China's economic engine. Without them, there'd be nowhere to store all of this wealth. I know it sounds crazy, but these worthless buildings in the middle of nowhere actually support a massive portion of China's economy. And who knows what the future holds, but it's not good. Anyway, until next time, I hope you've learned something, and you know the drill. Unlike the Chinese real estate market, stay awesome. because it's too far away from Fushun city and too far away and too from, from Shenyang. Shenyang so people were like nah and they decided I, I kind of saw the light rail kind of stopped around here so I don't mm -hmm. think there's much transportation here yeah so no one moved in and they built all this huge commercial center and stuff and then they abandoned it like a lot of these ghost cities right yeah. no one moved in and then you see all these buildings that are half built so they decided instead of giving up Mm -hmm. to dump 16 million dollars and 3,000 tons of steel into this structure. And US is, dollars. Yeah, US dollars. It's quite spectacular, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. But uh, again, a failed project because no one, no one came to see it. Yeah, I mean, it's weird. It's bizarre. It's just weird that you can find this kind of thing, you know, just randomly in, in the countryside of uh, China. <laughs>